You know, amplifiers don't have a very glamorous job. They're just there to support your AV receiver or processor by powering your speakers and be invisible while doing it. So if it's actually doing a good job, then you don't even know it's there. So how good is the Parasound A52 Plus and how good of a job does it do? Well, stick around. Hey guys, it's the Villa Man here, home theater enthusiast and lover of all things tech. And the Parasound A52 Plus power amplifier has been in my AV rack for a while now and I've been using it to power some pretty challenging speakers like my Rendell Sound 1723s and the SVS Ultra Towers. And I'll get into how it performed in a minute but first let's talk about some specs so we're all up to speed on what it consists of. It's a 5 channel amp from Parasound's Halo line. It provides 180 watts per channel into 8 ohm speakers and 255 watts per channel into 4 ohms with all 5 channels driven. If you're using it to power two channels then it provides 225 watts into 8 ohms and 350 watts into 4 ohms. It has a frequency response all the way down from 5 hertz to 100 kilohertz minus 3 dB or 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz minus 0.3 dB so with a flatter response. It has a total harmonic distortion of less than 0.05% at its peak and less than 0.03% typically. As far as its topology goes, it's a class A AB amp with circuitry designed by John Curl with a 1.5 kV amp toroidal transformer along with 100,000 microfarad of filter capacitance for storing all that power so it can be used on demand. On the back it has both RCA and balanced XLR outputs as well as a 12 volt trigger. So like I mentioned, I've used this amp to test some pretty challenging speakers so far. The Arundel Towers are a 4 ohm load with 3 8 inch woofers with a 92 dB sensitivity and right now I have them powering the SVS Ultra Towers and center channel speakers which are an 8 ohm load with an 88 dB sensitivity. And the amp has been able to power them through some pretty demanding conditions Conditions, which included chaotic action-packed scenes at some really high volumes. In the demo for both of these speakers I mentioned, I had the amp connected to my Denon X4300H receiver and I played the race scene of Ready Player One without the sub enabled and the amp powering all the ear level speakers with the front stage running at full range. So that means it was covering the entire frequency range of all the high frequency effects as well as the low frequency booms from the explosion happening everywhere as well as all the goings on in the rears and it's important to note that the lower end of the frequency range requires more and consistent power to accurately control the speaker cones to reproduce accurate sound from the scene. <laughs> Without that precise control, then there could be some distortion in the sound. That's especially true for bass heavy scenes or when there are sudden dynamic shifts where it goes from a quiet scene to a much louder one really quickly. In those instances, the power draw of the speakers from the amp increases and that's where the large bank of filter capacitance in the amp really comes into play. That's essentially where the power is stored until it's needed. So you can think of it as like a bucket and 100,000 microfarad is a pretty big bucket. A lesser amp wouldn't necessarily have as much. So that capacity is very important and part of what helps the amp to perform so well in a home theater setting, which can get so demanding. I say all that so you understand the context of how I've used the amp and if you've seen any of the movie or music demos then you'll know that the amp was absolutely great. The sound was full, crisp and as dynamic as one would expect from reference quality speakers and the A52 Plus was the power behind the scenes making that happen. I was really impressed and I could understand why it cost $29.95 which certainly isn't cheap but it's one of those pieces of equipment that you only need to buy once and you can have it for the life of your system and future systems. Besides the performance of the amp, another thing that impressed me and which is just as important was the transparency. The amp didn't add any coloration to the sound during 
critical listening of music for example. The amp was there but it didn't do anything besides what it was supposed to do and that's all you'd want from an amp and that's the transparency and the design pedigree that you're paying for. The amp also looks the part with the faceplate having a brushed metal finish with gold accents around it. It also has a power button and five LED lights to indicate the number of channels being powered. So even though it's certainly not a cheap amp, it's heavy and built like an absolute tank so there's no question that it'll last a really long time and it's definitely money well spent. Now there are other more powerful Parasound amps out there like the A51 for example for those of you who need a lot more power but I think that the most use cases the A52 Plus is a really great choice. Suffice it to say I really like this amp and I thoroughly enjoyed it being part of my system for the time I had it and I'm kind of sad to give it back actually. Let me know in the comments if you use an amp in your system and what kind and if one like the Parasound is one you'd be interested in. And if so, I've left links in the description. Thanks to the guys at Parasound for sending the amp out for review. Truth be told, this kind of turned into a long-term review because I enjoyed having the amp in my system so much. It's a good one. Don't forget to like the video if you liked it and if you haven't yet, subscribe for more content on audio equipment and 4K TVs. Thanks for watching and until next time, this has been your friendly neighborhood villa man saying be safe and peace.